Hello and uh, welcome to this module on uh, statistical decision theory. Uh, so, the goal here is uh, try to give you a, a framework uh, that we will keep uh, uh, using uh, for the rest of the course, right? For at least for the majority of the rest of the course, and uh, to introduce you to some of the basic notations and also uh, to talk about uh, some kind of a unifying idea behind. Uh, uh, what we will look at, at uh, uh, in different classification algorithms and uh, uh, regression algorithms. <coughs> right? uh, to set the tone, uh, let us uh, consider uh, inputs uh, which we will denote by x as being uh, drawn from some p dimensional space, right? so which we will call R, R, uh, Rp. Right? Uh, so, if you uh, think about uh, what we did in the previous modules, we talked about input that had uh, age and income as the attributes. So, that would mean that p was two dimensions, right. So, one of the dimensions represented age, other dimension represented income. So, what we are doing here now is trying to move to a more general setting where I am talking about any kind of a p dimensional space, right, <coughs> where p could be much larger than 2. And uh, the output that we are going to be looking at, uh, at least in the initial uh, regression case that we will see, uh, I will assume that uh, the output is uh, drawn from uh, the real numbers again. Uh, so, this would be like uh, the temperature that uh, uh, we saw in the second example in the previous modules. <coughs> right? uh, so, the input x is drawn from a p dimensional real space and uh, the output y is drawn from again a real uh, uh, the, from, the, from the real numbers and uh, in the case of regression. <coughs> right? So, in the case of classification we will see it a little bit later uh, the, <coughs> the output will come from a discrete space. Right? And we will also make an assumption that uh, the data uh, comes to you from some kind of a prob uh, joint uh, probability distribution. <coughs> right? So, um, you do not know this joint distribution a priori. Right? So, nobody tells you what is the distribution from which the data is coming, but uh, the assumption that we are going to make is that there is an underlying data distribution right? uh, like a joint distribution over the uh, inputs and the outputs. Right, and that it is fixed, right? And you are going to be given samples, right? Drawn from right, you are going to be given a set of samples that is drawn from this probability distribution over x, y. So this will be your training data. Right, which you will use for both uh, training and uh, possibly for validation if required. Right. <coughs> so, uh, so you are going to get an x1 with a corresponding y1, x2 with a corresponding y2 and so on and so forth. So, the goal is given such a set of training data. So, learn a function f of x that goes from the p dimensional space to the real line. Right. Uh, where uh, so the p dimensional space essentially corresponds to a point in the input space and the real line corresponds to the output uh, space. So, the function f is going to take any input that is given to it and produce a number. Right? So, the f could, could take different forms. Right? So, we looked at uh, f being uh, a, a straight line right? uh, in, uh, in the example that we saw earlier. So, in such cases, right? so my one example of f would be a saying that I am going to predict y hat right, is equal to f of x. Right. Given an x, I am going to predict a label y hat right, and that is going to be given by some Right. So, it is going to be given by beta naught plus beta 1 x 1, beta 2 x 2 all the way up to beta p x p. So, the one thing which I want you to note here is that this x 1, x 2 so on so forth are essentially the coordinates of x. So, when I say x here, x essentially comprises of
right. So, this could be age, this could be income and so on so forth. So, each one of these corresponds to a different attribute that describes the describes the data right. So, I can um, look at this and then I can write f of x as essentially compactly I can write it as <coughs> right. There is an alternate way of writing this is to declare that set right. So, I will set x naught equal to 1 and then I can just remove this uh, special uh, uh, treatment of beta naught and I can just write the summation j equal to 0 to p x j beta j right. So, is it clear? <coughs> right. So, this is essentially what we would do in when you are doing linear regression right. Uh, so, another example of uh, doing this is a very popular another classifier uh, which we will call the nearest neighbor classifier. So, where my y hat of x is given by 1 by some number k summing over all x i that belong to some neighborhood of x right and I sum up all the y i's corresponding to that x i. So, let us assume that my training data look something like this right. So, there is a x here, there is an x here, there is an x here, there is an x here and there is an x here and an x here right. And let us say that my k is 3 right. So, if I get a query point say somewhere here I get a query. So, this is my x. So, this is my x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4, so, these are my training data the x 1 to x 6 are my training data and x is the point for which I want to predict the output right. So, these are the places which I have already measured it this is a new point and I want to produce the output here. So, in this case what do I do is I pick the 3 nearest neighbors because k is 3 I pick the 3 points that are closest to this data point right find the corresponding y's. So, in this case I will pick y 2, y 3 and y 4 and I will take the average of these 3 points and I will report the value of the function at x is the average of this 3 point right. So, this is called the k nearest neighbor uh, regressor right. So, I will just take the average of the outputs of y 2, y 3 and y 4 and report that as a value at x. So, depending on where uh, x is I will be picking different uh, 3 neighbors and reporting their values ok this is the k nearest neighbor. So, there are different ways in which you can define this function f right. But uh, remember that uh, we had this discussion in the uh, last set of modules that uh, unless you make an assumption about the form of f you really cannot do any generalization. We needed to talk about lines in the previous class, but now uh, uh, now, we are talking about uh, uh, different assumptions for the function f need not necessarily be lines ok. In this case it is a straight line right, but in this case it is a averager it is a local averager and that gives me the function that I want to learn <coughs> ok. So, how do you choose this function right. So, there could be many different ways in which you can define uh, uh, the betas right. So, so given that I have chosen that this is the uh, way to uh, to model the function how do I pick the betas right. So, how or uh, how do I even choose this form for my uh, uh, for my uh, predictor. So, how do I know that this is a valid uh, form to choose. So, we have to look at some performance measure. So, which we will consider in this case is the 
a loss function right which will compare the true output y right with the predicted output f of x right. So, I have the true output y and I have a predicted output f of x. So, I will have some loss function that compares f of x with y and my goal is to find an f of x such that this loss function is minimized. <clears throat> One of the most popular uh, loss function that people use in the literature is known as the squared error. So, I basically look at right and uh, the performance measure that I am interested in is the expected prediction error of the function f right. So, that is equal to the expected value of y minus f of x squared right in the case of squared error. So, the expected prediction error is the expected value of y minus f of x the whole square right. So, what is the distribution with respect to which you are taking this expectation? So, whenever we talk about the expectation of a random variable, so we will have to talk about the underlying distribution right. So, what is the distribution with respect to which you are taking this expectation right exactly the joint distribution of x and y right it is the joint distribution between x and y. So, that is the distribution with respect to which you are taking this expectation therefore, I can write this as So, I can do a little bit more uh, sleight of hand here right and uh, talk about um, the conditional distribution right. So, if you remember the probability of x comma y can be written as probability of y given x into probability of x. So, it can be written as probability of y given x into probability of x this is just the product rule in uh, probability. So, I get this. So, what does this tell me that ok there is some chance with which I can choose a data point x right having chosen a data point x ok. So, what is the probability of seeing a particular output value right. So, so why is why why are we looking at probabilities here again. So, this helps us to uh, kind of uh, you know model a variety of different scenarios. Uh, so, the first one is uh, if there is noise in the measurement you know. So, I am talking about uh, what is the probability of y given x. Suppose, I am telling you that I am measuring the temperature at 3 o'clock every day right. So, there will be some kind of a natural variation in the temperatures measured at 3 in the morning right. So, that is modeled by this probability right. There will be some uh, uh, set of temperatures that are very prob uh, probable and some set of temperatures that are not right. So, so for example, if I am measuring temperature at 3 am right. So, 40 degrees is not a probable value right. So, those will have lower uh, probabilities and then uh, say something in the 20s will have a higher probability. Right? So, I am talking about Chennai if people are wondering how you are getting 20 degrees uh, early in the morning right. Um, the second factor that this allows us to uh, look at is uh, our ignorance about the whole system you know. So, I might have just chosen the time of day maybe there are other factors I should have taken into consideration uh, while I am forming my data. So, these factors about which I do not know anything will appear as noise you know. So, it is not important whether I take the temperature at 3 am maybe it is important where in the building I do the measurements maybe I am measuring it next to the kitchen where things will be warmer or maybe I am measuring it next to an air conditioner where things would be actually warmer if I am measuring it on the external of the building right and uh, or it could be measuring it uh, on the in, in inside of an air conditioned room the temperatures could be lower. 
So, even though I say I measure it at 3 am, there could be many, many such factors for natural variations, which I have not modeled. Okay. So, this is beyond the natural variations in the system. Right. So, one way of arguing uh, about it could be to say that, uh, hey, the natural variations are due to factors that you do not know anything about. Right. So, that is a valid argument. So, it could very well be that. So, it is really there is nothing like a natural variation, there is no real noise. So, everything arises, all the uncertainty in the data arises from my lack of knowledge, uh, but that is a philosophical question. So, there is things that are measurable which we do not measure right? and uh, that I would call as lack of knowledge and things which are unmeasurable which I would call as noise. Right? There could be both of these sources uh, which introduce uh, the probability into our system. Right? So, it is uh, it's not uh, just a mathematical whimsy. Uh, that we model this as a joint distribution, but there is an actual uh, practical reason uh, for talking about um, uh, probability distributions here. Right. So, now I can go back and write my expected prediction error as an expectation over x of So, an expectation over x of the expectation over y given x because I have written this probabilities out like this. So, I can write the expectations out also like this of this quantity right. It is the same quantity earlier the only difference is now I am conditioning it on the value of x right. So, what this expression says is ok I will tell you what x is ok I will tell you what x is then you tell me what the error will be. Right. So, the uncertainty here is over the value of y. Right. So, I will give you x, I will fix x, you tell me what y is. So, I am going to look at the error just on conditioning after conditioning on x. So, this will only look at the variation on y and the outer expectation gives me the variation on x. Right. The outer expectation takes care of the variation on x. So, now I can try to find the minimum of this prediction error right. I can try to find the minimum of this prediction error by conditioning on a specific value for x right. So, I will not look at this expectation right. So, I am not making any assumptions about f right. I am just assuming that f can be anything like right? any function in the world right. f can be any function in the world. So, what I want to do now is uh, I want to look at each and every value of x and I want to say that I will pick an f such that for every value of x right, it makes the best possible prediction. I right. will pick an f such that for every value of x it will make the best possible prediction. Right. So, what does that mean? So, it will produ produce a prediction. So, f of x for a specific value of x, f of x will give the output such that this inner expectation is minimized, right. So, I am going to write it down like this. So, for a specific value of x, right, this is f of x for a specific x. So, far I was writing capital X, which is the random variable, right, but here I am using a specific x. So, given an x right f of x has to be a specific number right. So, let us say somebody with an age of uh, 25 and income of uh, 15,000 rupees walks into my shop I can only give one output right is going to buy a computer or does not buy a computer or I am going to say I am measuring the temperature at 3 am what will be the value right I can give you only one number since I have already fixed the input description. So, I am going to give you one output corresponding to that input description. So, that output let me call as c 
right. So, that is C, C is the output that I am going to give for f of x, right. C is the output I am going to give for f of x. So, what is the value that I should choose for C, okay. So, it should be such that the error which is y minus c squared is as small as possible, right. So, I am minimizing over the different possible values of c that I could assign for f of x. I am trying to pick that c which gives me the smallest error, right. So, arg min means first minimize with respect to c and take that argument basically take that value of c which achieve this minimum. And if there are multiple values that gives you the minimum you can pick any one, right. So, this is essentially called conditioning on a point. So, instead of conditioning on the random variable x, right. So, I have conditioned on a specific point where x equal to small x, right. And then I can find this. So, now what happens for every possible input x that I could have, small x that I could have, I will find the corresponding c and I will say f of x equal to that c, right. So, the thing to note here is I have not made any functional assumptions about what this, uh, 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 what should f look like, right. So, f could be something really really jagged I do not care right. So, this is a recipe for disaster as we saw earlier right you might end up overfitting uh, the data, but uh, just work with me here because we are just trying to build some general principles right. So, we can do little we can go a little farther right now that we have decided to say that uh, the, the minimizer is the one that uh, the value that you assign to f of x. So, what is the value of c that will minimize this expression? right. So, I have to look at y minus c squared. So, I have to assign a single value for c. So, let us just imagine what does it mean right. Suppose, I give the input as x, I make a measurement let us call it say y 1 right. I give the same input x again, I make another measurement say y 2. I give the same input x again, I make another measurement y 3. So, I have three measurements y 1, y 2, y 3 for the same input x right. Now, I am asking you to give me a prediction for what will be the output given x, right. So, what, will, what should your prediction be? It will be the average of these 3 y's, right. So, y 1 plus y 2 plus y 3 divided by 3. So, that should be the prediction. So, why is that the case? Because if you are talking about squared error, right, the quantity that will minimize the squared error is essentially the average. So, I can end I will end up writing that f of x equal to the expected value of y given x equal to x right. So, this is essentially what my prediction would be. So, this is the known as the conditional expectation right or so, sometimes called the regression function, called the conditional expectation or the regression function. Okay. So, there are a few problems with this, right. So, what are the problems? A, um, I do not know this distribution, right. So, I do not know the distribution with respect to which I am taking the expectation. So, what is the distribution with respect to which I am taking the expectation? That is essentially probability of y given x, right. So, that is the distribution with respect to which this expectation is being taken and I do not know that. If I know that my problem my life is a lot simpler, right. So, I actually have to estimate it from the data. So, what is the data that is given to me? I have this pairs of x 1 y 1 to x n y n. So, that is the data that has been given to me and I have to do this uh, estimate of this expectation from that data, right. Uh, so, how will you do that? So, it is very simple you know that uh, you can always estimate the expectation by taking averages. So, what you would do is from your data you pick all the training data points that have this value of x 
right find the corresponding y take an average and you are done right so one simple way of thinking about it is to say that okay i can't find the true f so i'm going to find an estimate of that which you call as f hat so is equal to the average of all the y i's such that x i equal to x right uh, that's the problem here why so how many samples do you think you are going to get of the same input x right first the second thing is you are not going to be able to make a prediction for any data point which is not there in the input right so you are trying to make an estimate of the expectation by using the averages but if you do not have enough uh, uh, measurements then your average is going to be bad right and second thing is you are making an average at that point and if that point does not exist in your training data you are not going to be able to return an estimate for it right. So, we need to address this somehow right. So, what we will do here is we will relax the conditioning right instead of conditioning on a point we will conditioning we will condition will condition on a region right. So, what does it mean? So, I am taking the average here of all those data points for which x i equal to x. Now, that is not going to work right because there are too few data points. So, what I am going to do is I am going to take this as the average of all the data points which belong to some region around x which is essentially the the neighborhood that we are talking about right. So, that circle there would correspond to the neighborhood around x. So, I am going to be uh, conditioning on this region which is given by this neighborhood around x ok. So, does that make sense right. So, we are not going to condition on a point we are conditioning around a region. So, the one assumption that we are making here implicit assumption that we are making here. Uh, uh, so, why are we conditioning around a region? So, that instead of taking an average of one data point I have at least k data points of which I will be taking the average right. So, that gives me a better estimate of the expectation right that is that is the reason we are doing this uh, conditioning over a region. Uh, but uh, uh, more importantly we are also making an implicit assumption you know we needed to make assumptions if you remember uh, our uh, inductive bias said that we needed to make assumptions. The assumption that we are making is that the output of the function over this region is going to be a constant right. We are going to be making the assumption that the output of the function over this region will be a constant. Right. So, let us let us try and do a little example. So, that becomes a little clearer to people right. Let us me go back to my one dimensional example. So, it makes it easier for me to draw things. So, I have right. Let us say I have multiple uh, data points like this right. So, I have a query point and, and, and then the corresponding outputs ok. So, these are the y's right this is x and that is y. So, these are my x x i's and y i's ok. So, this is the training data I have and now given a query point let us say I am given a query point here right. I want to know what is the output value for this x. So, I let us say I pick my three nearest neighbors which should be these three data points right and then I will try to take the average of this, this and this which will be somewhere here right. I will say that is my output. right 
makes it. So, like this I am going to make cases for variety of data points, but one thing which I want to point out here is, so I, I assume that my data point lies here. So, what if I had assumed that my data point was here? If my query point was here, so what would have been the output? So, my neighbors remain the same, right? My three neighbors do not change, these are my three nearest neighbors, whether the query was here, right? Whether the query was here or the query was here, my nearest neighbors do not change, right? So, what will be the output for this input point as well? So, I will be taking the average of these three points, so the output will also again be that, right? So, in fact, for certain some region around here where uh, these three are the nearest points, the output will be a constant, right? right? So, the output will always be a constant. So, this is what I mean by saying that we make the assumption that the output is constant in a region, right? So, this region, so for all those data points for, for which these three are the nearest neighbors, so the output is going to be a constant. So, this is essentially the assumption we are making that the output is going to be consistent over a region, so that I can write an expectation over the region as my substitute. Okay. So, if you think about it, so what have we come up with here? This is essentially your nearest neighbor classifier. Right. So, you take the generic idea of minimizing the expected prediction error right, and then add certain conditions to it. So, what are the conditions you are adding to it? So, you are well you cannot do the expectation, so you are going to take averages and you cannot do an average on the training data and therefore, you are going to do an average over a region assuming that the output is constant over a region. So, conditioning on the data point wise and then conditioning on a region relaxing that to conditioning on a region gives us nearest neighbor classifiers. So, in some sense you can argue that one way of minimizing the expected prediction error yields a nearest neighbor classifier. Okay. So, in fact, this is a very powerful classifier and uh, you can show that as, uh, as k increases, right. So, the estimate becomes uh, more and more stable, you know. So, for small changes in the input data, the, uh, the, the classifier does not change tremendously, right. And um, so, as uh, right. and as uh, n and k tend to infinity or they become large, right. So, your ratio uh, k by n would go to 0, right. In such a case, your f hat of x will go to Right. as k increases the estimate becomes more stable in particular as k and n become large that is and my number of data points is very very large and uh, so the number of points I can look in the neighborhood also becomes larger and larger so, such that uh, of course the data points have to grow at a faster rate than the size of the neighborhood that is what k by n uh, means. So, in which case I can show that my actual prediction I make using this average. Uh, actually approaches the true prediction that I am interested in, right. Um, so, there are a few uh, caveats here that I need to uh, point out. Uh, so, I am assuming I am saying that n goes to infinity, I mean that is a pretty uh, blaze statement to make because n rarely goes to infinity, right. In fact, never. Uh, so, com com coming up with large data sets is hard uh, except for uh, 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 very rare uh, cases. Right, and therefore, uh, uh, you cannot really have a, a classifier that gives you the right output, right? And uh, and another problem is as p becomes larger, right? As the dimensionality becomes larger, right? Uh, generally, 
uh, the data uh, tends to become sparse you know. So, if I am looking at k neighbors in, 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 in like a thousand dimensional space uh, the, 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 a, the area or the volume covered by these k neighbors would be very large because they are very sparse space and uh, it is usually not a good assumption uh, to make uh, that uh, the input is actually a constant over this I am sorry the output is a constant over this uh, large area right. So, one thing is if uh, p is large right then uh, if the dimension of the input is large if you have like a 10,000 dimension vector uh, as your input uh, then using uh, k nearest neighbors is not really a good idea right. And uh, alternatively you should also remember that uh, in some cases uh, having a little bit of a bias is actually not a bad thing right and uh, therefore, uh, um, uh, we have to look at an appropriate way of representing the function f. Remember we did not make any assumptions about the function f right. So, the function f could change uh, as drastically as we uh, as we want and uh, so that means that we are trying to keep the bias as minimal as possible and uh, so we would like to um, remove that assumption right. So, moving on let us look at the, uh, the linear regression case where we actually made a significant assumption about the form of the function f right Expe uh, uh, specifically we assume that f is going to be linear in the input parameter. So, the f can be written as uh, beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 and so on and so forth right. So, essentially our f of x we assumed it to be in vector notation we assume it to be some x transpose beta right. right? Assume it to be x transpose beta and uh, so if you look at it from a uh, uh, the training data point of view. So, I can think of uh, uh, having a, a vector notation for this right. So, I can think of a matrix x right. So, a matrix x in which each row corresponds to an input x y x 1 right. So, x will be something like uh, uh, x will be a matrix that looks like that and uh, so my beta would be a vector uh, of uh, the coefficient. So, beta naught to beta p right and uh, of course, my x is going to have a right. right. So, the 0 dimension is going to be 1 right and then going to have beta. So, I can uh, uh, look at the output as essentially being x beta. So, my overall error is going to be y minus right. So, that is going to be the and that is going to be the, the estimate of the expected prediction error based on the training data that has been given to me and I can minimize this I can take the derivative right and then I can equate it to 0 and I can do some minimization to get the value of beta and uh, that is essentially going to be right. So, take the differential of this equate it to 0 simplify for beta right. So, I am going to get beta hat equal to yeah, this is primarily because of the square here. So, you are going to get uh, this as your simplified expression. So, this is essentially my, uh, my beta beta hat vector and uh, so remember that the x that we put in here is essentially a matrix where the the columns uh, the the rows or the 
data points right the columns or the features so this will be the like the age of every customer that comes in this will be the income of every customer and so on and so forth and each row is a complete data point right uh, so what we have done here is uh, make the assumption that my function is globally linear and then i have tried to solve for it uh, to give you the parameters beta hat right and in the nearest neighbor case we made the assumption that my function is locally constant right so we start off with the same uh, uh, formulation we wanted to minimize the expected prediction error and we make different assumptions one assumption leads us to linear regression the assumption that we made was the data is going to be globally linear and another assumption that we made where the data is going to be globally locally constant yielded us k nearest neighbor okay